Don't forget to smile. About to embark on a world tour, global pop sensation Sky Riley begins experiencing increasingly terrifying and inexplicable events. Overwhelmed by the escalating horrors and the pressures of fame, Sky is forced to face her past. Parker Finn returns to the director's chair for Smile 2 in a sequel that opens up perfectly, sets the tone and the atmosphere for the rest of the film. And not to give away too many spoilers, we pick up six days after the original film, diving right into familiar territory, and what a juicy opening it is. This sequel definitely embraces the phrase of bigger, is better. Bringing in a pop star, elaborate dance numbers, and an amplified stage presence that adds to the tension and horror to this film. The film uses this setting to explore the pressures of being an artist with Sky, the main character who's at the center of this whole project. This whole movie would honestly not work as good as it does if it wasn't for Naomi Scott. Naomi Scott is spectacular in this role, not just with the singing, because she actually can sing. She's an amazing singer, and it's really cool that they find a way to utilize that talent within this narrative that genuinely feels natural to her abilities and to her abilities as a performer, because her performance is just as good as Bacon was in the first film, where you're following somebody that has a lot on their shoulders for their job, for their personal well-being, and a lot about their past that they're not willing to confront. That's what makes this whole franchise unique, is the idea of trauma and how it can pass on to people or how people can just withhold it and not seek the right amount of help or seek help at all. We find that same theme here of trauma with a pop star. It does adopt that phrase, like I said, bigger is better. For most of the time, it does work with that bigger budget feel, and sometimes it doesn't, and I'll get into that later. Now, is this movie scary? Yes, it is, without a doubt, truly scary. There are some predictable jump scare moments where you're like, three, two, one, ah, okay, I didn't see that one coming. Ah, you got me there, buddy. For the most part, I would say, even with those predictabilities, you are still having a good time. There are standout scenes, including a memorable sequence halfway through that blends humor and horror. And you know which one I'm talking about. I'm talking about this moment, yeah. People, when they leave the theater, this will be the moment that they will remember walking out. Now, when it comes to horror and being scared, sometimes the mind can actually bring out something truly more terrifying than actually what we see in the film. Meaning, sometimes we don't need to see the outcome of certain things. More specifically, without giving away the ending, I prefer the second to last shot that we get from this movie than the actual final shot. I wish that they almost did a reverse order or just they didn't even show the final shot because our brains, can create something more horrifying than actually what sometimes the creators want to show us. Be like, hey, look, here's the thing. Eh, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. What I will say in regards to pacing is that I found the first film to be a bit more interesting in that regard because we are in this detective murder mystery kind of feel for that first movie where we are trying to uncover what's really happening. Why is this thing smiling? What even is this thing? And granted, we don't get all of the answers about like its origins or whatever. There's still an amount of mystery with an amount of answers that feels satisfying. And with this approach, within the first 45 minutes, it is a bit of a character study, and I like that. But we're also in her perspective, where she doesn't know what's going on. So we have to repeat the same process again for not just 20, 30 minutes, but for about a good half of the film. And I just found that to be not necessarily boring, but kind of redundant. Now, what I will say with what the director could have been going for is the idea of isolation. When someone does something terrible, they want to put themselves in the corner, essentially. They don't want to talk to anyone. They want to almost, in a way, punish themselves. They see themselves as the villain. And in this case, Naomi Scott, who does a great job in this movie, but it's just too much at times where we need to keep the plot moving forward, especially for people that already kind of know what's happening happening to the subject. Ultimately, Smile 2 is bigger, but not necessarily better. While the pacing can drag and some moments feel formulaic, it still offers an entertaining horror experience that keeps the theme of trauma's lingering impact alive. I left the theater with a smile on my face, even if it was a little uneasy. 7 out of 10. Thank you guys so much for watching this review. It really means a lot. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, but most importantly, do not forget to be blessed.